Hey folks, welcome back to this video. We are going to be talking about quotient rule here. I am not going to prove the quotient rule in this video, that is in a separate video, but we're just going to talk about what the quotient rule says and how we use it. So the quotient rule is what we use when we're taking the derivative of a quotient of functions. Quotient means like a fraction of functions. So if we have f divided by g and we're taking its derivative, we're going to use quotient rule. So we might be tempted to think that the quotient rule should just take the derivative of f and divide it by the derivative of g. But unfortunately, it just isn't this simple. When we use the limit definition of the derivative behind the scenes to prove this derivative, it just doesn't work out this nicely. Instead, we have to follow the instructions that are laid out by the quotient rule and use them to lay out the derivatives in a specific way. So what we have is that the derivative of f divided by g is equal to g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. And we have a way that we often say this to ourselves in order to remember it. It's what I learned when I learned the quotient rule for the first time, and I've heard it in other videos and from other students as well. So what I do is I call f the high function, since it's on the top of the fraction in the numerator, and I call g the low function, since it's in the denominator or the bottom of the fraction. So we can read the quotient rule as low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And here that d high and d low corresponds to the derivative of the high function and the derivative of the low function. So this is just a way to remember the quotient rule for yourself in your head. As always, we can use the other type of notation to write out the quotient rule. So we can say the derivative with respect to x of f divided by g is equal to g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. But both ways, this is kind of a long thing to write out each time, so I tend to take that first line and remove the of x portion from it and write this a little more simply. So I say f divided by g prime is equal to g times f prime minus f times g prime all over g squared. And this is what I will write with us as we continue to do some examples throughout the rest of this video. All right, so let's try an example. Let's say that we have y equals x squared over e to the x, and we want to find dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, when I'm reading this out loud, I have to say x squared divided by e to the x, and that divided by is a good indicator that we can use the quotient rule here. So I just want to highlight that x squared is my high function in my way of saying this, and e to the x is my low function. So when I write out the derivative, I have low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And I'm substituting in the high and the low where necessary. Then I can take the derivatives. So I have e to the x times the derivative of x squared. That derivative is 2x minus x squared times the derivative of e to the x, which is just itself e to the x, all divided by e to the x quantity squared. Now, just to finish things off, I'm going to simplify by canceling out an e to the x term in each of the parts. So since it's in all of the terms, I can cancel it out, and I'm left with 2x minus x squared over e to the x. Now, you probably don't have to do this simplification. I just think it's pretty nice to see that we can cancel it out and make it a little simpler. All right, time for another example. I'm going to write this one out and then let you try it. So let's evaluate the derivative of tangent of x divided by 5x squared. So again, that divided by, good indicator that we're doing quotient rule. Why don't you give this a shot and try it out and then we'll come back and look at it. So here I have the high function is tangent and the low function is 5x squared. So when I write out my derivative, I have low d high minus high d low all over the low function squared. So we're just left to then take those derivatives. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. So I put that information in. So the other thing I'm going to do is just distribute that squared term in the denominator. So I have 5 squared, which is 25 and then x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. So I have all divided by 25x to the fourth. And this is my derivative. 
Okay, so I'm going to finish the video with two more examples. I want to do an example that's a little bit more messy, so I'm going to take some polynomials and put them into a rational function. Let's say we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 10 divided by x to the fifth plus 4x squared, and we want to find the derivative of f. So pause, you can try this out on your own if you want, but I'm just going to continue on and show you how I would do this. So here the high function is x cubed minus 2x plus 10, and the low function is x to the fifth plus 4x squared. So when I put these into the formula for the quotient rule, I have low d high minus high d low all over the low function squared. So I have two derivatives to take. These both just use power rule. So I have 3x squared minus 2, that's my derivative of the high function, and I have 5x to the fourth plus 8x, that's my derivative of the low function, and I put those in. Then in the denominator, I have this low function squared. I'm just going to leave it written that way because I don't care to distribute this all out. So even though this looks really kind of messy and cluttered, I'm just going to leave it like this. This is my derivative. This is as complicated as we need to get right now. We're not asked to do anything else with this. So quotient rule here with a rational function that has polynomials in it. Not too bad. We just take those derivatives and put them into the formula. To finish the video, I just have one more example. This is sort of an extra example. I just want to illustrate that we can use the quotient rule really on anything that looks like a quotient. So let's say we have j of x is equal to 1 over x cubed, and we want to find the derivative of j, j prime. So when I read this, I have to say divided by, I say 1 divided by x cubed, or 1 over x to the third. And here we know from previous work that we could rewrite this as x to the negative third power, and then use power rule. But I just want to show you that maybe if you didn't do this or you forgot that you could do it, you can still use quotient rule and get the same answer. So here our high function is 1 and our low function is x cubed. So when I put these into the formula, I have low d high minus high d low all over the low function squared. And then I just need to take derivatives. The derivative of 1 is 0 and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Then also in the denominator, I am going to square the x cubed. x cubed squared, we multiply those exponents, so I'm left with x to the sixth power. Now I just need to simplify. So I end up with negative 3x squared all over x to the sixth, and I can actually cancel out an x squared from both the numerator and the denominator, so I'm left with negative 3 all over x to the fourth. Okay. So we found this using quotient rule, but I just want to show you this is the same as what we would have got using the power rule with x to the negative 3. So if we were to take the derivative of x to the negative 3, the negative 3 would come out front, the exponent would decrease from negative 3 to negative 4, and I'd be left with negative 3 over x to the fourth power, which is exactly what we got using quotient rule. So you can compute the derivative whatever way you'd like as long as you're following the rules properly, and you should end up at the same place. Awesome, thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.